Good morning and welcome back to the channel. So today I figured I would show you guys how I am going to, I don't know how this is going to work, so we'll find out, but I figured I would show you guys how I'm going to dye some paper because I am going through coffee dyed paper like it is going out of style. So I need more. Um, like quick like. <laughs> and um, so I figured I would do a tabletop desktop version uh this is not new this is not even my idea this is all over the place um this is everywhere i just figured i was doing it so i would show you guys how to do it um but you need a brush you need a bowl of coffee stack of paper now i did keep this because i figured somebody was going to ask me what paper i'm using that is the paper I'm using. I am also going to be using, let's go with a paper towel. I'll use a paper towel. Or I'll use a couple paper towels. Okay, I'll use all of my paper towels. No, they're all of them. I'm just gonna use one for, I'm just gonna use one for now. Um, I'm at the end of my roll here, so they all came out. Bloop. Here, we'll use the broken one first. All right, so I'm going to need this. This is the paper I'm using. I'm just using regular old copy paper. That's it. Uh, I have a basket over here that is just a regular, you know, I don't know where I got this. I don't know how old this is. Um, I'm going to wipe it down real quick. It's got some dust on it. I actually got it out of my closet, like my bedroom closet. Um, so it's dusty. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to basically paint the paper and then stick them in this basket. And I wanted something that was open so it would have room to dry. Um, but I wasn't real sure what I wanted. <laughs> So we're just going to find out if this is going to work or not. Because I have no idea, to be honest with you. Um, I don't have a clue. I've never done it before. I've done tabletop, but nothing like this on this scale. I've done like a handful of pieces, and that's really about it. But here we're going to do a whole bunch. Uh, my goal is to do this whole stack. And for whatever reason, there is a terrible shadow right here i've got lights everywhere blinding me but shadow right here is really bad and i'm sorry for that i don't know why the sun is out my window is open and maybe that's the problem anyway so we're gonna take our brush take our napkin here uh let's see we're gonna move you guys just a little bit so you can see what i'm doing all right, so we've got our bowl of coffee and we're just going to paint and you can make this stronger or lighter depending on the coloration that you would like. Now, if you want it spread out more than it already is, that's where your paper towel comes into play. So we're just going to paint both sides and I'm just doing this right on the stack. And I do have lots of paper underneath me, so, well, underneath this, so it's not going to really damage anything by, you know, getting coffee on there. So that's it. I'm going to put my paper, my basket right here, so it's easy to get to. And that's it. Now, if you wanted to, you could add um, stuff like this, and I'm just going to wet this actually you know what let's just wet it like that and then we're gonna damp some of that stuff out a little bit and basically you're just going to put a design into your paper at the same time while dyeing your boy leaves so All right, and this is what this looks like. 
inside my basket. That's it. Piece of paper, couple doilies, and that's it. So I'm just going to keep painting and we're just going to have a chit chat, you and I. So infamous question, how are you guys doing? What's up, yo? What have you guys done over the weekend? Uh, it's Tuesday for me. It's actually my daughter's birthday today. Uh, she is cleaning up her Legos in her room. <laughs> I hope. Anyway. <laughs> um, and we're waiting for dad to get off work. Because unfortunately, you know, dad doesn't get off for, you know, family holidays. So, we got to wait for dad to get off work. And, you know, it is what it is. All right, and so I'm just going to keep on layering this. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Like I said, no idea if this is going to work. And we can also make this even darker if you wanted to. I've got this jar. I actually just got this yesterday. It was on clearance. Um, I have no idea this brand, but it was decaf instant coffee, and it was on clearance, so I got it. Yeah. You know, it's funny as I actually have coffee sitting beside me, too. <laughs> like, as in, I'm drinking coffee. Okay. I guess I couldn't very well have the smell of coffee without, you know, having some coffee. All right, so I just put a big old chunk of the coffee in there. And I'm just going to stir it up with my paintbrush here. And it's just going to darken things up just a little bit. You see that? And then again, if you got it too dark, you can just add some more water to it. That's all. Because I'm sure I can find things to do with these darker pages, just like I can find things to do with the lighter pages. Wait. Go down there. Okay. And what's really cool is you are getting designs just from laying the paper down as well. You know, you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? And there's nothing too extravagant or crazy about this. And you're still going to get the crunchy too because it's, well, dried wet paper. Um, now I don't think you're going to get quite the crunchy that you would get with, uh, say, uh, an oven dried paper. Bloop. I just have this stack of doilies that I had planned on dying. So we're just going to lay those down. Those right there. So if you've had enough of the paintbrush, you can go and grab your napkin and you can do that. But I'm just stacking these one on top of the other. Nothing fancy. You can do tea. You can do this with Kool-Aid. Doesn't matter. You can put splotches, splotches like this. And throw coffee all over the place. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And if you're really worried about dyeing your hands, you can wear gloves. I obviously am not worried about it. So, uh, update on my kitty, uh, Miss Sabella. She's okay. Um, she's still hanging in there. She's a trooper. We got her some new appetite um, encouragement medicine, if you will. Uh, it's just an ointment that we put on her ear, <laughs> which is weird. But, you know, that's what the vet said. So, that's what we're doing. Um, let's see. 
we got her the food that the vet's office gave her after, like when they were when she was there and she seems to really like that so she's eating she drank today like she drank a good chunk of water this morning i was like whoa nelly Furtado, that is awesome she purred at me yesterday morning which was awesome it's been a minute since i've heard that baby purr um so she's she's hanging in there she's she's doing all right she's still a little skinny we're trying to get her to eat some more and uh she's still she's still jaundice i can see it in her mouth because we have to give her oral medication every day twice a day so we give her steroids um and i can see her teeth and so she's still jaundice but like i said she's hanging in there she's a trooper all right let's see Oop. And now I'm just using the doilies as my design, if you will. All right, that there, that there. I might need it a little bit more. And before you know it, you can get through this whole page, page this whole stack of paper. And then you'll have some, I don't know how many of us in a ream. I have a whole box, but because um, my idea with getting the box was one, there's five people in this family. I am not the only person that uses paper. Um, all of all of my kids use it because they do online learning with their homeschooling. Uh, they also do projects and such like that. Then I have two college students. Um, one is my husband. And he, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of him. I don't think I've told you guys. So Wayne decided to, um, so his um, college is paid for by the military. And as soon as he get it by a program called tuition assistance, and as soon as he gets his degree, they stop paying for it. So he actually changed degree programs two classes before he got his uh, bachelor's in nuclear engineering two classes one of them was a capstone class which is like i would say easy but it's not um anyway um he had two classes left and he decided to change it because what he wants to do when he gets out of the military actually has nothing to do with nuclear engineering. So he wants to be, um, he wants to do imagery, like in the medical field, like x-rays and CAT scans and MRIs and stuff like that. He's always fa had a fascination with medical, but he's never really wanted to be like a surgeon or anything like that. He just wants to go into the imagery, right? So anyway, um, he decides to change uh, courses change uh, degree programs uh, there's actually two of these I wonder if I can separate those out without breaking one um, and so now he is doing his um, his associates in general health care because i mean you got to start somewhere so um he is doing his associates in general health care and then he's actually ironically only seven credits away from having his associates because he has so many credits in his nuclear field and they're all like the general you know education classes or whatever um yeah, he's like, that is really cool. Okay, I'm just going to leave it just like that. I think I want to put another one down first. Let's see, do you? The outside. I don't really want to cover that up because that's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, he is um, doing now 
a general health care associates. And then once he finishes his general health care associates, which like I said, he's seven classes away from that, then he'll go back and he'll get the remaining two credits from his, um, his bachelor's degree for nuclear engineering. So I'm just like, dang, you are so awesome. <laughs> um, which I'm really proud of him because I think the thing that I'm really proud of him for is doing what he wants, not what he can do. Because he can do nuclear engineering. That's what he's done for the last 15 years. That's what he's going to continue to do for the next five years. But that's not what he wanted to do. So I'm really proud of him for, you know, doing what he wants to do, not what he can do. Um, and I mean, that says a lot to me. Okay, I'm going to put this one down now. And I'm going to put some more on top of it. I don't know, I guess, because it's, it's so easy, obviously, to do what we can do. But it's hard to do things that we want to do. Because, I mean, we get stuck in a you know, I want to do this, but I'm not very successful at it, or it costs a lot of money and we're not, you know, making any back. Like it takes a lot of work to make things work the way you want them to. And I don't know, I guess I'm just, I'm really proud of him for doing it. You know, it's funny because he used to always say, um, to my kids, cause I would always ask my oldest, you know, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And, um, by the way, I'm super proud of her too. I'm proud of all of my kids, even my old one, which is my husband, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so we would ask her all the time, like, what do you want to do? And she's like, oh, I don't know. And Wayne was always so good with her because he would be like, you know, that's okay. Cause I don't know what I want to be when I grow up either. So I thought that was really cool. So I really hope this works out because I'm getting some pretty cool patterns. And I like the coloration on it too. It's not too dark. It's not too light. Pretty perfect. And it's pretty simple too. All right. Let's do some more of you guys. Bloop. There's one. There's another one. And there's another one. All right. Oh, I forgot that was there. Oops. Forgot that one right there was there. So anyway, what do you guys want to be when you grow up? I was pretty fortunate and I was able to find this outlet, this journey of crafting back in, oh my gosh, five years ago. And um, I've been doing that ever since and I love it. It's funny because uh, my youngest, she's really funny. She's like, Mom, you shop for a living. It's like, I sure do. And it's awesome. It's funny because I'm always looking at Etsy, always. And every time I, uh, my oldest comes in here, she's like, Mom, are you shopping again? It's like, yep. But it's not because I necessarily buy from Etsy. But it's because I, I do the research, you know. So... Like I was saying earlier, it takes hard work. You have to, you know, constantly be working. It's not all about play. Then again, the play is pretty fun, too. I mean, I am sitting here playing with paper and coffee and water. Just because I can. So, anyway, I am going to continue to do these papers until this stack is in that basket and 
Then I'm going to wait a couple days, wait for it to dry. And then I will show you guys the end result. And don't forget, you can be like all splotchy splotchy with it too. You don't have to be quite so deliberate. Those ones loud, but it works. Same thing. And you'll get a nice, really cool pattern. And if you don't like it so dark, then just mop it up. Take a sheet of paper, paper towel, and just go poop. And go. Poop. Voila. Cool, huh? I like it. I dig it. I do like the lighter color, though, so I'm going to continue to do it like this. I like the splotchies, but the splotchies give me a much darker color than I really want. So I'm just going to continue to paint it on with my paper towel. And what's really great about this method is you're not completely dr like drenching the paper. So it's really not going to take that long to dry. Let's put you back over there. I think we were wetting it more with the paintbrush than we have been with the paper towel. And see, this is a really good method too. If you have printables that you have printed off into a, um, an inkjet printer, because you're really wetting one side at a time. If you've noticed, I've had to flip my page over um, just about every time I've dyed this. And you know, it's not going through quite as, as heavily as it would if you dunked it in the water. Because obviously, if you dunk it in the water, you're going to get a lot of water from that. Or a lot of moisture, rather. But yeah, you just do this and then... Well, there you go. Your back of your paper is nice and, you know, colored. And you could do a whole batch at once, just like I'm doing here with these guys. You know, whatever it is you print out, you could paint the back of it. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and I will let you guys know how it turns out in a few days. Uh, it's going to take a couple days, I think, uh, because I'm going to let these dry naturally. I'm just going to leave them in this little bucket here, a little bucket, and I'm just going to let them be. And we're going to see what happens. And I've got a whole box of this paper, so if it comes out that I don't like it, uh, well, we'll use it for something, and I'll try again with another ring. So, but I think it'll turn out all right in my very orangey hands. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you um, are inspired to dye some of your papers, and um, yeah. So you don't have to be standing in your kitchen to dye your papers. Now, I haven't really gone through that much. As you can see, I still have a very large stack of papers to do. But I'm going to turn on some Netflix and I'm going to dye me some papers. And I'll come back and see you guys again at a later date. So anyway, you guys have fun and uh, have fun crafting. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.